I asked him about being on video, he said, I'm famous. Why, yes, I am wearing my new merch, and you can get your own too at fanjoy.co slash mollyburke. Get your own braille hoodie. We go up to a 5X. We are very size inclusive and proud to be so. And we have cute phone cases. Where's my phone? Question my mom asks daily. And so many other pieces, so check that out. Okay, today's video is one I've been planning to do and excited to do for so long now. You see it in the title. Yes, that's right. I have hired an animal communicator to come talk to my gallop and tell me what he has to say. I'm kind of slightly scared. Now, I know some of you might think this is like kind of wacky, kind of weird, Maybe you've never heard of an animal communicator. It's kind of like a psychic, but for dogs. I did a video with the psychic twins linked below and I in that video shared that I'm really into psychics. I'm really into that kind of like weird hippy dippy stuff that a lot of people are like I'm super into it. I have had an animal communicator work with Gallup once before, about five and a half years ago when I first got him. He had some very interesting things to tell me, but we didn't really know each other. We were brand new to each other's lives. So I feel like he's gonna have some more to tell me now. And I also used one when my first guy, Doug Gypsy, had passed away. And honestly, like, just like with psychics, it just brought me a lot of comfort. It brought me like a lot of closure on her death. Yeah, so I'm super into it. You don't have to be, that's okay. I'm just sharing this with you guys and we'll see what Gallup has to say. Speaking of Gallup, I actually also have this. This is Gallup's merch. You can find it at the same place, but it is his merch. And he is actually going to be coming out with an entire collection later in 2020, where proceeds will be donated to the Mira Foundation, but we won't get into that now. But anyways, yes, this is my handsome man. You guys will see him very soon because this video is kindly sponsored by Super Chewer. Super Chewer, if you haven't heard of it, is a subscription box service. You can get a one month, six month, or a 12 month deal. And obviously the longer you do it for, the cheaper the price is. These boxes are a $45 value, but the lowest you can get it for is 29 a month, which is pretty awesome. It was created by the same makers that created BarkBox, which Gallup used to have a BarkBox subscription and loved it. And I think he's gonna love this one too. Is this for Gallup? Do you wanna open the box? You know, open it in a second, babe. I have to tell them the rest about the box. <laughs> you know it's for you. So in this box, you will get two tough toys, two bags of full-size treats, and two meaty chewers, meaty chews. So let's just open it up. I'm very excited. All of the products in the box are made in Canada or the USA. They do ship to every state and territory as well as Canada. So very exciting. I'm gonna have all the stuff linked below so you can check out more information. And if your dog does have dietary restrictions or allergies, they can cater a box to it. As well, there will never be a stuffed toy. It's a stuff-free guaranteed box. And best yet, if your dog doesn't like a toy or destroys a toy, they have a guarantee that they will exchange it for a new one, no questions asked. So, let's see. Ooh, Gala. I know, babe, I know. So, we've got this toy right here, which Gallup is very excited about. Oh, you already want to play with it? We're, we're, have to, we're gonna go outside to play. Okay, let me put the toy down. There's more exciting things to come. We have this. <laughs> Each box, by the way, is themed. So they theme it by like play type. And there's lots of toys that they do that are like puzzles for them and that kind of thing to keep like their mind active. And just because it's like tough toys doesn't mean you can't get it for small dogs. This is for any size dog. Ooh, this is really cool. Do you like put treats inside? Like a treat holding, plug treats into Puckle's teeth for tasty play. So you can plug the treats into these. We've got a treat. We've got two meaty chews. So you will be getting these very soon. Don't you worry. I'm gonna take you out to play. It's gonna be very fun. We have this right here. Ooh, what is this? Oh my goodness. Big toop. Ooh, this is super cool. So this you can like change the challenge. So you slide this out and you can put like peanut butter or treats inside and then depending on how challenging you want to make it for them you slide it in as far as you want it to go to give them a challenge and then you can also put more treats up in this side so what you can do is you can like part leave this partly open with some treats in here and then put another treat in here so they have two different places to be challenged by and this is obviously like I got the box for large breeds because he's you know 
94 pounds. Yes, I just got him weighed. I keep saying 90 pounds. He's actually 94 pounds. And then we have two full-size big bags of treats. Okay, so one is lamb and papaya. Lamb recipe dog treats with lamb, potato, and papaya. And the other one is boar and banana. Ooh. Dog recipe. Who doesn't want a good boar and banana? Boar and banana. Boar and banana and lamb and papaya. Sounds delightful. Okay, should we go outside to play? Want the meaty chew? There, that'll keep you satisfied. Oops. <laughs> He's run away with it. Oh, you would go sit on my nice fluffy carpet, wouldn't you? Going? Yeah, go. Go. There. You don't want me to take that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I think Gallop loves us. Hey. All right, so, ooh. I took some of the treats that they sent and I've put them inside this. I'm gonna close it up a little bit and we'll see. Do you wanna try to figure it out? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> he needs to focus. I think he could have hours of fun with this. Ooh, what's this one? So this one, they sent actually treats that fit perfectly <gasps> inside, oh. which is great. But once you run out of these treats and maybe don't have ones that fit, you can just put peanut butter in it. What is that? It's a toy. What do you think it is? It's a puzzle toy. I thought it looked like a vegetable, like a zucchini. That's just you. Gallop, is that one too hard for you, babe? He's like, guiding is already very mentally challenging. I don't need a puzzle. What about that Ooh, one? Oh, look at that one. <laughs> Ooh, he could have hours with this too. Yeah, this will really keep him busy. I like this one a lot. He's rolling now. <laughs> <laughs> it's rolling. Oh, he's kicking it with his paws. He's got two. Oh, he's very entertaining. I think he really likes these. He loves these toys. We should have gotten him stuff like this before. I know. No, he's back to the other one. Is it too hard? Is it? Oh, he knows there's something else in that box. Okay. Oh, oh this seems to be the favorite. Yeah, the other one still has treats in it though, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, he says yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> He's going between the two. So these are the toys that I was able to pop into that. What did you call it? A zucchini. Oh, like a zucchini. And then these are the ones that I popped inside of the orange and red toy. Which I think is his favorite. Well, it's certainly the most challenging for him. Yeah. We just came back and found that he got all of his treats out of the one toy. So he has moved back to the biggest struggle best of all, the red and orange toy. It's a treat trap, I tell you, a treat trap. He's loving this. So definitely check out the Super Tour box, all the links down below. Gallup already freaking loves it. And he is definitely a tough chewer. You might notice he's missing one of his canine teeth. And that's because when he was 10 months old, he was chewing so hard that he snapped his tooth in half and then later had to have it removed because the snapped tooth got infected. So well done, my Super Chewer. door knock and he never goes to the door but he oh, was really? like no he never goes to the door he doesn't care <laughs> he's just like whatever like whatever yeah. but, but you you were here and he was like he's been waiting by the door like that i don't know it's so like funny. he had you knew you're so smart he just knew you were gonna get to tell me all your thoughts he's like i've been storing these up for five years i've got a lot to say right. about this one where did i put that Gallop, don't you knock my drink over me <laughs> i'm gonna move this because i just know your tail you have a big strong tail Gallup is so determined to be in this video. He knows it's all about him. You know, he gets cocky because all my most viewed videos are the ones that are about him. So he's like, really, it's my channel. So we have Sally here. 
who's going to be reading Gallop. Now, I found you because another girl in my building recently rescued a dog and she had a session with you and she said it was so helpful. And I've been looking for somebody in the LA area mm -hmm. who was doing this because when I did it, it was back in Toronto where I lived and we've, we've lost contact with that person. So I've been trying to find somebody and I'm so excited we did because last time I did it, I've done it twice before, once with him and once with my previous guide dog. And for my previous guide dog, she had passed away. So it was like very healing for me and provided yeah. a lot of closure and then I did it shortly after I got him and I was we were trying to like learn about each other and understand the way we would work together as a team and I was struggling to connect with his personality so I found it really helpful and it was really cute I was telling you some of the things that he was he didn't know his own age so we let him know his age and he also thought he was three types of dog he thought he was a lab a Bernese and a mountain dog so we corrected him on that but there was like cute little things like that and I remember I was typing it all down and he had asked if I wanted help because that's his job his job is to help me so he's right. like does she need help it was so cute and it was so fun so I've been intrigued to see you know like five five and a half years later we've been together working together for that long like what he has to say but I know a lot of my audience might not be familiar with animal communicators so mm -hmm. could you kind of share a little bit about how you got started doing this and how it works yeah for years and years ago years and years ago <laughs> I worked with horses so I've always been around animals and I was always drawn to them and then I had a changing career and I did a lot of international travel and so forth and then when I moved here I just had this draw to go back to animals and I, I didn't know what it was going to be I knew things it wasn't like I wasn't going to be a vet and you know certain things I knew like I'm not going to do this and that and I was like it just feels like it's going to be something weird <laughs> something different and I, my friends were like well what I was like I don't know I just no, no, when I know. So I had a friend who uh, was living in Spain and she had an incident with this dog on the beach. He was lost and she said she didn't speak Spanish. So she, uh, somebody who was there went and called the number on his tag. And while that person was gone, she said, I just suddenly knew this dog was from the next town over. It was a bed and breakfast. The owners were away and he kind of got bored. So we went for a walk and now he was hungry and wanted to go home. And so this guy comes back and he says, oh, he's from the next town over. And she said, oh, a bed and breakfast and the owners are away. And he said, how do you know? She went, Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. And then she went home and said, like, what was that? How did I know that? And so she started researching it. Then I had her talk to my dogs and, I, and she was in Spain and I was here and I was like, this is what I want to do. So I ended up doing a one day course at the Gentle Barn, which is uh, north of here. And then from there, I looked to do a deeper course, you know, and I went to this lady I found in Seattle and I ended up doing her whole like, university program and then doing her teacher training. and. Uh, that was that. And That's, now you're here. And now here I am, yeah. So I do you them. talk to like all sorts of animals? Yes. So any animal. I've spoken to gibbons, to, to pigs, to, to dogs, cats. I'm doing a lot of dogs and cats. You're not your normal animals that yeah, people have at home. Do dogs, cats, horses. But I've spoken to hedgehogs and, you know, birds and like, depends what animals that people have around or they need help with and so forth. Yeah, so. It could be anyone, any anything, I should say. <laughs> All right, well, Gallup, do you have anything you want to tell us, sir? Yeah. Okay, so tell me about him. So he's how old? He's seven years old. He's seven years old. Yeah, a little over seven. And you've had him five years, right? Yes, August 2014, I got him. And so he helps you, he works with you? Yeah, he's my guide dog. Right. And is there anything specific I can help you with today? Any issues or questions that you have that's been going on? I think else? generally I just want to know, like, what he has to say about our life. Like we travel a lot and he moved from Canada to LA. But I think my biggest question in general is like, how long does he feel like he wants to work? Like, is he still really happy working? Does he think he'll work for a few more years? Or like, what's his kind of thought on like retirement? And his work life. And if he was to retire, does he stay with you, or does that question of so what happens? Then? Just so I can my plan is that he will go live with my dad in Toronto. Okay. I think he would like that, but you know, if he has any thoughts, and he knows your dad, right? Oh yeah, yeah, they they're good friends. They're good. He also has a real obsession, love, attachment to men in their 20s and 30s. Oh, really? <laughs> like, outside of that age range, he You're really doesn't own. care yeah. about you. <laughs> but if you are a man in your 20s or 30s, he is, like, He's so obsessed. Him. Is he trying to find your husband? That's what I think. <laughs> Because the thing is, when I got, when I first got him, I had a boyfriend, and they didn't like each other. Oh, really? And okay. obviously, he stuck around, and the guy didn't. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't know if he's, like, trying to make up for that, yes. or, like, what it is. He's like, oops, I did break yes. that relationship. Sorry about that one, but this one's good. Yeah. So, Sally's just going to be quiet while she communicates with Gallup. 
Okay, so it seemed like there was a lot being written down. I heard a lot of pen on paper action. I'm like kind of nervous. Oh my goodness. Oh, no, there's no need to be nervous. Okay. He loves you very much. Um, so okay, like his character that I get from him, he's very smart, he's really hard working, he's very calm though. Um, very calm. He's very proud of his work and he's a really good boy and he tries really hard. So he's really proud of, of, of the work that you guys do together or the work that he does with you. He said he loves it when you're busy and he likes to see new things and experiences, so probably your travels and so on is, is great. He loves also hanging at home and having cuddles with you. <laughs> I feel like that is true because when we come back from like a long time on the road, he's excited to be back. Mm -hmm. But if we don't leave again for a while, he gets so, like, um, okay, now I want to go. <laughs> like he, he, sometimes we're like, does he like the travel? But then like, we'll get the suitcases out and go to the airport and he's like, yeah. Yes! Oh. Like, he gets so excited. Yeah. We're like, okay, I guess he likes the travels. He definitely does, yeah. Um, so he said he loves you very much and you understand each other and he knows exactly when you need him and what you want. And he said you get him as much as he does you and you're very bonded. Like, my mom and I all the time were like, he just knows things. Like, it's almost weird, like, kind of creepy. Yeah. Like, he'll just, like, he just freaking knows. And we're like, how did he know that? Yeah. How did he know to do that or that I needed that? And it's mm -hmm. like... It's bizarre, I've never met, like my first guide dog didn't have that, right. the way he does. Like, it's it's so just, intuitive. He just has this instinct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, he, I assume he loves his life, he said he loves it, he's very proud of himself, and he loves having a purpose and being needed, and he's very good at his job, according he is. to him. He's a, no, he is, like, everybody's always like, wow, you have the best guide dog. Like, yeah, he's, he's very proud so of good. I asked him if he likes to travel, he said yes very much. He said sometimes it gets overwhelming if it's really crowded, but I'm really good and I just have to work harder during those times. So he's really, he takes it very seriously looking after you and looking out for you, so he puts a lot on himself to do that, and so he's really proud of it, and he loves doing it, but he also then like, likes to take a break too, you know, yeah. before you go again. Um, he said you rely on him a lot and he's very proud of himself, it's very important work. I asked him about being on video, he said I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me lots of people know who I am. I do, I tell them that all the time. All the time, I'm like, you're famous! <laughs> Even though I don't know if he really understands the concept of what that is, but he likes it anyway. He likes to be important. But retiring, he said, no, he wants to keep working. He really enjoys it. He said, uh, I said, well, when you do retire, you go and live with your dad. So how do you feel about that? And he said, I like him very much, but I'd really miss Molly because, and our work, and I'm not ready yet. And he said, maybe when I'm older, it might be too much for me. If I'm not as quick or not as aware of things around him to, to work, to be as a, a reliable mm -hmm. for you, but not yet. And I said, okay, how will she know when's the signs what, that you're not, you're kind of wanting to retire? And he said, if I look worried or I look like I'm not enjoying my work and I look stressed or if I get like stiff like if he's not as mobile or something like that maybe if he gets arthritis for yeah. example like something where he can't get around as easily and he struggles he said that kind of time might be maybe then but certainly not for a bit anyway, it's really least. funny like we had a lot of travels in the summer and when we got back he was like not like working as well like he was like really slow and just wanting to turn back and go to bed like he didn't want to work and I was like oh no like does he want to retire and it's like he heard me say that and like He's like, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just Turned around. Go. He was like, let's go, mom. <laughs> After like a few days of me saying the R word, he was like, no, no, no. No, yeah. no, it wasn't it, Mom? He was unreal. It was un He knew. He was like, oh, yeah. shoot. I was exhausted too. Between Gallup and I, we were the same. We were just like, both all flopped around. They were both like <laughs> useless. Exhausted. They were like, <laughs> I had my two helpers were down. <laughs> two helpers were down. And then they came like, back up together. They came back together. Oh my gosh. So, men in their 20s and 30s, he said he wants you to have a friend who's really nice and loves you. He said, I'm trying to tell her it's okay to have one and I'll share her, but they have to be nice and kind though. <laughs> <laughs> Will you share me? Like, yeah, and if it's the right one. <laughs> Not yeah, because he wasn't interested in sharing me with my ex boyfriend. He was like, so like yep, no, she's mine. <laughs> nope, she is doing all a terrible mine. Job. Yeah, he really, like, it was a real problem in the relationship. He was oh just gosh. like, I don't like it. No, nope. I don't like it. You're doing a terrible job. Yeah. So I haven't had a boyfriend since. It's been four years of oh being single. Oh, I think he's trying to let you know, like, hey, it was just that one. It's not everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Gala. So we wanted to ask about him and swimming because as you guys know, he had some trauma around swimming in pools. He had two traumatic experiences. One was enough to stop him from swimming in pools, so the second just put him over the edge. And prior to those, he loved swimming in pools. He would run and jump right in. And so we worked on it with Caesar Milan. I'll link the video below. And he did successfully get him to swim in a pool. But since that video, he has not gone into pools again. And he's always been okay with open water, like the ocean or the sea or a lake he always continued to enjoy swimming in it's just pools so i was wondering what he has to say about it 
So what he had to say is he doesn't trust them and he doesn't feel they're not safe. So he'd rather stay on the ground. And I said to him, what about the beach? And he said, the beach is different because I can choose to go in or not. Right, I guess because he can keep his feet on the ground and walk in versus... He can walk in and walk out or he can just go in the shallow bit or come out when he wants to. Um, but he said with the swimming, like the swimming pool, he doesn't trust them and he doesn't feel safe. So how does he feel, I guess, when I'm swimming, I wonder? Because I love swimming. We always joke that he's the lifeguard. Because <laughs> he'll always like walk around the pool and come to the edge and look at us. He doesn't like it, he worries about you because they're not safe. Which makes sense, he's like, why are you in there? You alright? <laughs> I don't have to go and get you, don't yeah, have an accident. He goes to the pool. <laughs> yeah. He circles around. Well, he'll he'll literally to... circle the yeah. pool when I'm swimming and he'll like go and he'll poke me with his head if I come to the edge to say hi to him. Yeah. Did he have anything to say about airplanes? Airplanes, he said they're noisy but I just go to sleep so they're easy. It's so true. It's 100% true. He just sleeps the entire flight. It'll be a 12 hour flight. He's like, <sighs> That sounds like it's him. For you yes. And it makes sense. Yeah, to him. definitely. Is there anything else you wanted to cover with him or check in on with him? I'm surprised he didn't ask uh, for more treats and cheese. <laughs> I can ask him. Oh, yeah. What are his thoughts on his food intake? His food intake. What, do you, what food do you give him? We give him Yukonuba. Yukonuba. But he's like addicted to cheese. It's the only thing he'll break the rules for. The one thing in the world that he will break his solid guiding rules for is to steal someone's cheese. And he knows when the refrigerator door opens, like is what we're going to oh, get out of like he, the, oh, the he, cheese is in there. He knows, yeah. like, but it's not just no. if we're opening it. It's only if we open it specifically no, to get cheese. In our minds that we're going to get cheese. We don't even have to touch oh it. My God. He just knows. He knows. But yeah. we'll open the fridge any other time and he won't care. Like Buddha in there, right? Just like, it's all knowing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. It's on. so weird. One thing that I am super curious about is he used to be like very shy and like very clingy very reserved with his emotions. Now he's like an extrovert, you know, like he completely changed. Now he's excited to meet new people. Like from the time I got him to now, his personality has done like a 180, 360. Yeah. Like he's so different. He's just as sleepy and he's just as calm and he's just as hardworking, but his like personality. Yeah, you know, his personality came out. Yeah. So we thought of so many more questions to ask Gallup and <laughs> you've once again been writing away. Writing away, I have. Okay, so his past, um, which is one of the questions we wanted to know what, I, what he felt about his past. He said it was a lot of change and he was very unsure of himself and he didn't feel accepted. But he really enjoyed the training when he had, went to the uh, training for you because he said he had a purpose and then he was given rules. And so suddenly he knew what he was meant to do and he was, knew what was expected of him. And so that helped his confidence. He said he was very smart and he understands and he finally had a job and knew what people wanted. Um, and I think that probably in turn would have helped with his personality. He said when he was shy and to sort yeah. of become more of himself, like he knew what was expected of him, whereas he hadn't known before and he didn't, I don't think he was given much guidance and I think he just felt like he was in the way. You know, he just said probably being a bigger dog, it's like some people don't always realize how much space a bigger dog takes up, you know? So he usually puppy, like usually guide dogs have their puppy raising home and then the training facility. Mm -hmm. But when he was 10 months old, he got switched from one puppy raising family to another because he was too big. Gotcha. So Once he grew to his size, the original puppy raising family couldn't handle his size. Gotcha. So that makes sense with him then saying he didn't feel accepted. So when he's at home without you, you go traveling without him. He said he feels sad because he doesn't have a job and he said he misses you. But he also wonders why he couldn't go and what, what he did wrong. Cause he said, you know, why, why aren't I there? <laughs> like that's my job. And I said, so I explained to him, this is really sweet. I explained to him, I said, there's some places, there's some countries that don't allow dogs in very easily. And he said, what, well, even me? And I said, <laughs> yeah, even you. And he said, he said, and I said, they just don't always understand what your role is. And he said, but I'm a working dog. And I said, I know. <laughs> he said, and I said, but even so, they don't always get it in the same way. So I said, that's why it's, she'll have to go without you. And he said, it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just crazy, ridiculous. Just crazy. I asked him about a dog, getting another dog or a cat, as you wanted to know about a friend. And he's yes. like, well, what would their role be? And I said, well, I don't think they'd have a role like you do. And he said, no, no, he said, they can't. <laughs> he said, you could try getting another animal, but they need to understand that it's his job and not theirs. He's not willing to share his job. Oh. Um, and I said, well, I think there'd be more for a friend for you, someone to play with. And he said, that would be fine. Playing, yes, but not my work. <laughs> Very protective of your job, Mr. Gallup. Yeah. Well, a cat certainly couldn't take his role. That's, that's for sure. That's for sure. So I spoke to him about being that he used to be shy when you first got him and then he changed. When you had him, he said I, he knew he was home with you and he could be himself. He said you loved him and you were so kind and you knew and he knew what to do as well because of his training and then he felt more confident and he could be himself so he could just let his character come out. And I think how you were with him as well just reassured him. He just felt accepted, he just did his job, he was praised. He was loved, and then it was like, oh, it could be me, I'm home. This is, I can be me now. We asked him how big he was, and he said he's an average size. <laughs> I wanted to know because sometimes he tries to fit in the tiniest of places. 
And I'm like, do you understand how big you are? I would say he's above average. He's, I'd say he's above average. He's 95 too. pounds. So yeah, he's 94 average pounds. Size, but in his eyes, he's an average size. I'm like, how big are you? Is that average? <laughs> I feel like 50 pounds is maybe average. I, 50, so. I, I agree. But, and yeah. he's like 94. I asked him how he felt with grandma. He said he loves her. He said she's very calm and she works hard too. She said, we both have jobs and they're similar, but we let each other do their own job. We don't tread on each other's toes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, he said he's very content and happy in his home and with his family. He wanted to let you know that. His uncle Brady, he said he's a lot of fun. He doesn't do our work. So we just play and hang out and he's very smart though. So. He is very smart. Yeah, it's true. His granddad, he said he's very kind and patient. He also doesn't do the same work as grandma and me. Um, he said we play together. I could see them always doing like a tug of war type of thing. I don't know if they've ever done that, but it looked like some sort of game where they're playing like pulling at a rope and pulling back. Or Probably his like leash. Uh, <laughs> he loves to bite his own leash and, and pull it. Like I see him pulling like something back and forth. I thought they were playing. Okay, well to him it's a game. So I asked him about the cheese because you said he loves cheese and he said it tastes really good. He loves the smell and the softness. And I said, well, apparently they told me that you even know that they're going to get cheese before they even get up. He said, yeah, I know. I tell them. <laughs> it's literally like he's it's like, he's he's like communicating to, to us. I'm often thinking about cheese. Like cheese would be good right now. He's like telecommunicating <laughs> to us to go get the cheese. Go get the cheese. And you could add into his food as he likes this sort of dairy thing. Uh, goat's milk is really good. It's a pro good probiotic for animals. And so it's great to put in their food. It's tasty too. So you're bound to like it if he likes cheese. It comes in cartons and mm -hmm. you can freeze it and then defrost it. And, you know, just put it in the fridge yeah. when you're ready. Just add it into their food. So it's a great probiotic as well. They're always good for them stomach too and um, as he loves cheese so much I'm sure he'd like it so that could be a nice thing to add in so I asked him about so you were saying that sometimes you go out with him as your guide dog and they don't people won't accept him and won't believe that he's a guide dog yeah. and won't let you in so he said he doesn't understand it I asked him how he felt when that happens when they won't they don't get in the places he said he doesn't understand it he said why won't they let us in and I explained to him I said I think there's been sometimes people don't understand your work and I said sometimes there's also been people who say they've got a guide dog or, or a service dog of yeah. sorts and they actually are not a service dog of sorts some people are, are getting, you know, wise to it in different properties and then they don't believe anyone, you know, believe it's yes. true, right? And he said, but he said, I'm a working dog. And I said, I know. And I explained it to him and he said, that's really rude and it's not fair. And I said, well, I know. I said, I think, you know, some people do it because they really want their animal to be with them all the time. And I think it's just got to be out of control. And he said, it's very disappointing. Was his opinion on that? It is very get... disappointing that people yeah. abuse the system. Well, especially when you can't get in. Like, yes. you know, when you're, you who actually do need yeah. it and have that service can't get in with your own dog, it's, you know, because people don't believe you, it's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, he's great. He's very proud of himself and he's very proud of his work with you and he loves you very much and he's passed out now. He's in the other room asleep on the floor. Yes. <laughs> As per usual, if he's not working, he's sleeping. Those are his only Those two things. What else is there to do? Right? Simple. simple. Work or sleep. He lives a simple life. Well, thank you, Gallup, for sharing so much. And thank you for helping him share. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. It was great. Is there anywhere people can find you? You can find me um, on Instagram. It's at Animal Communication with Sally. Or my website is sallyjenkins.co. Okay, I will link both of those down below in case anybody's interested in getting in touch. Because you can read animals not just in person, right? No, most of my work is actually on the phone because I have clients all over America, but I have them internationally too. Obviously, coming from England, I've I have friends and clients in Europe and I spoke to someone in Australia yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, it could be anywhere. It's normally majority of my work is a phone call for that reason. Both of my other sessions that I had previous with somebody else were phone calls. They were phone calls yeah. too. Yeah. It's pretty common because you know it's just it's, we're talking to the animal, I have a photo of them, so I mean he's not here, he's in there, <laughs> you know, so it can be done either way. This was fascinating. Thank you so much for coming You're and so reading welcome. my gallop. It was a pleasure. I hope He's you guys enjoyed. Boy. All right, so there you have it. That's everything Gallup has to say. I forgot to ask if Gypsy comes to visit, but that's okay. I know she does. Again, some people might think I'm crazy. To each their own, right? Literally, I'm such a fan of the placebo effect. Like, if a sugar pill works, a sugar pill still works. And that's the thing. Like, whatever you need to do to feel full and good and positive and happy, you do it. You know, if you don't believe in this stuff, I totally respect that you don't. But I'm into it. And if you are too, I'm gonna link Sally's in information below so you can get in touch for her to communicate with your animal and thank you again to super chewer for sponsoring this video gallop is already obsessed so links to all that info of how you can sign up to super chewer for your tough chewer is down below as well all right love you guys bye